Um, hi everyone, my name is O Salitofi, and I'm with the Performance and Algorithms Research Group uh, at the LBNL. And today I will be talking about um, our work on protein similarity search and how to do this on uh, distributed memory system using GPUs and etc. And this is a joint effort of the ECP projects, Exabiome and Exagraph, and our tool that does this search is called PASTIS. So uh, comparative genomic study is the uh, biological relationship between different organisms by exploiting the similarities over the genome sequences. Um, a major component of many biological workflows is to find out the existing genes uh, by aligning them, by comparing them against a reference database. For example, a, a common task is to find out the functional, the functional or the taxonomic contents of the samples collected from an environment, often by running those collected sequences, comparing them against an established and known reference database. So uh, it becomes more and more important to enable and build fast computational infrastructure for uh, this kind of comparative genomics, uh, as more and more genomes are sequenced every day. Uh, with the sequencing costs dropping and the technology becoming more available, um, the bottlenecks in this metagenomics research and uh, are shifting towards computation and storage. So for those unfamiliar, um, metagenomics means that you can have genomes in a sample uh, virtually from uh, any type of organism, not just one like bacteria, it can be bacteria, it can be from a plant, it can be from an animal, it can be from a human, that's called metagenomic datasets. And they are uh, extremely large datasets because you can have any genes and they can be related or not. You don't know anything about them. Um, our team developed uh, distributed tools for both the search and the clustering of protein sequences. Uh, in this talk, I will focus on the I will focus on the search component. Um, there are existing tools in this area, although these tools are fast and well optimized for shared memory environments. They are not really well tuned for uh, distributed memory environments. They usually implement a tool for shared memory environment, and then they try to extend it to a distributed memory setting, which do not often scale very well. Um, these are uh, our two tools. Uh, the first is PASTIS, uh, is for alignment via sparse matrices, uh, which basically performs the search on these sequences on metagenomic data sets. And for clustering, we have HIPMCL, uh, which implements a distributed memory high performance implementation of the Markov clustering algorithm. Um, here, this figure shows our pipeline to form the protein similarity graph or to perform the protein similarity search. Here at the left, uh, we had the protein sequences. From a given set of sequences, we select the pairs which we want to run the alignment on. This alignment, we produce a similarity measure, uh, which we can then use um, to establish how similar the pairs are. Uh, usually at the end, we filter out the pairs that do not mean, uh, meet certain criteria in similarity or the coverage. And then this is going to finally lead to final similarity information or the uh, similarity graph, uh, however, however you look at it. Uh, and then this graph uh, or this information can be used to cluster to get the protein families, to discover new protein sequences, et cetera. Um, there are basically three components. Uh, the first and the third here, as you can see, uh, the candidate detection and the filtering out of the dissimilar pairs are memory bound operations, whereas the alignment where we perform a batch of uh, pairwise uh, protein sequences, uh, this is complete bound. Um, a major novelty in passive is the treatment of graphs as sparse matrices. The basic information storage and manipulation medium in passes are sparse matrices. They are used to represent different kinds of information required throughout the search. Uh, for instance, uh, here on the left, you can see uh, there's a matrix uh, where the rows represent the sequences and the columns represent the k uh, The k means that a uh, substring uh, in that sequence. So if that k exists in that sequence, there's a non-zero in that location. 
as you can see, uh, these matrices are quite different from the matrices in numerical linear algebra. They are uh, actually graphs, and we have a lot of custom information. Uh, we do not just use a numerical value in, in those non-zero locations. We, uh, we store custom data types and operations on these matrices usually operate on those you know, extended data types. Here we present uh, a scalable distributed memory implementation of these components. Here on the right, you see the uh, software stack of uh, software stack of passes. Um, it relies on Comblast to perform distributed sparse matrix operations. Uh, this library supports MPI open MP type of hybrid parallelism. And for alignment on CPUs and GPUs, we use two different libraries, uh, CCAN and ADAPT. Uh, these are on node shared memory libraries and they are quite fast and optimized for shared memory environments. So uh, they are not aware that we use them in a distributed manner. So we orchestrate them to uh, perform the search uh, and delegate the alignment to those libraries. So what are the basic challenges of this similar search? Uh, there are two basic types of computations performed in our search. Uh, one of them is the sparse computations, and the second is the edit distance computations. Uh, the former, the sparse matrix computations, are memory bound. They have low computational intensity, high memory footprint, and they have a lot of irregular memory accesses. While the edit distance computations have high computational intensity, and they have a uniform pattern in computing those edit distance matrices, which are uh, small and dense. So they perform a lot of computation per byte. Uh, while in sparse computations, that ratio is quite low. So they, that's why they have high memory footprint. Another challenge is that this kind of search usually requires huge amount of memory and the existing libraries in this area have various techniques to deal with this issue, ranging from uh, writing intermediate files to disks to performing the search in stages. Uh, the problem is that the, uh, the challenge is that the number of the candidate pairs that need to be stored and aligned, it grows by the uh, order of n square. So since we are doing a many against many search, if we increase the number of sequences uh, by n, your uh, search is going to go over uh, n square. So it's going to require uh, extensive amount of memory. Uh, we have uh, several different techniques to uh, efficiently perform this search. These are some of the uh, techniques or algorithms we have implemented. These are um, uh, optimization techniques. They include optimization techniques, low-level optimization techniques, as well as algorithmic innovations. Um, the first technique we use is the block or the incremental formation of the symmetry graph. Uh, we here have a null algorithm called block to dimensions sparse to mass. So this uh, is used to find the, uh, the candidate pairs which are going to be aligned. We have different uh, algorithms, heuristics for load balancing, and then uh, specific to GPU optimizations uh, for the GPUs when we use the GPUs. Uh, we have a technique that can utilize all the resources on node by distributing the work we do uh, while doing the search. Uh, this figure here shows uh, block to dimensional sparse uh, there are a lot of matrices here, as you can see. The matrices on the left are multiplied to find the candidate pairs in the middle, which are here uh, the non zeros in this overlap matrix. Each non zero is a candidate to be aligned. And then uh, after this alignment on the right, we have the summary matrix, uh, which contains the information we need. Uh, we can limit the uh, memory required by the entire execution of this uh, uh, the search. Uh, or the you know, uh, memory count of the symmetric graph um, by using a block formation or the incremental formation of this uh, symmetric matrix or the overlap matrix. Um, so uh, this parameter is tunable. So we have a control over the amount of maximum memory we use. Uh, so in this way, we uh, bound to maximum memory utilization and then we enable in-memory search for huge data sets. And it also opens up, opens up the path for uh, several further optimizations. Uh, the obvious disadvantage is it increases the time comparing to doing this thing all at once, but it is better than doing, uh, not being able to do this. 
And it also increases the communication while doing this multiplication on the left you see here, but it is negligible because we often overlap those with you know, uh, other computations and so on. We have different techniques for load balancing. As you might have noticed, the overlap matrix in, in the previous slide is symmetric uh, because if sequence i and j are similar, uh, sequence j, I, j and i are also the same. So uh, this matrix is symmetric. Uh, in this way, uh, by using, by exploiting this matrix, we can avoid alignments and even perhaps sparse matrix computations. In this block formation, incremental formation of the matrix, uh, we tested out two approaches based on triangularity and indices. The basic difference is that the triangularity based approach, uh, it avoids a lot of sparse matrix computations, but it can still lead to load imbalance, mainly due to diagonal blocks in the matrix. Um, on the other hand, the index based approach, it achieves very good load balance uh, and it preserves the structure of the overlap matrix, but it needs to compute all of all the blocks of the overlap matrix. So it cannot really avoid a lot of computations compared to the triangularity based methods. Um, here you see the comparison of these two schemes. Here a line uh, in the left plot and the middle plot, you see three points at each uh, line uh, indicating the maximum, minimum, and the average obtained by the processes that are running in parallel. As you can see, uh, the index based method is able to attain a bad, uh, better load balance than the triangularity based methods for all tested block counts. Uh, but at the right, you can see uh, the triangularity based method, it is able to save a lot of computations. And when the number of uh, blocks increases, uh, the effect of this load imbalance uh, reduces or disappears in the uh, triangularity based method because the number of diagonal blocks is proportional to order of n, while the number of entire blocks is proportional to order of n square. So the takeaway is that when the number of blocks is relatively high, we prefer the triangular to base method. When it is low, we prefer the index based method. Um, we perform the alignments on the GPU. So we delegate the alignments on the GPUs and uh, those high memory footprint and those irregular computations related to sparse computations, we do those on, this, uh, we perform those on the CPUs. Um, in the incremental formation of the graph, uh, the CPU has to prepare the candidate pairs, uh, which are aligned, and then it uh, sends them to the GPU, uh, which performs those alignments, and then copies back to the uh, host site, and then uh, host processes them to uh, incrementally form the symmetric graph. Uh, in this way, if done, you know, naively, these the CPUs can stay idle. Uh, but this block formation allows us, uh, allows the CPUs to go ahead and prepare the next patches while the GPUs are busy with performing the current patch. In this way, we can hide the overhead of the sparse computations. Uh, and these are distributed sparse matrix computations with all the collective communications, you know, and the irregular memory accesses. So avoiding those types of operations uh, are really uh, useful because fast computations do not really scale well uh, as opposed to those alignments uh, that are usually that usually scale really well. Uh, as you can see here on the table, um, if we done this nearly in the plain way uh, and with the pre-blocking, uh, we achieve around 30% of reduction in the overall execution time. Here on the left, you see the strong scaling performance and on the right, you see the weak scaling performance. Uh, triangular to base approach uh, achieves uh, a strong scaling efficiency more than 75% on 400 nodes, going from 1500 nodes to 400 nodes. As for the weak scaling efficiency, there are different components as you can see here uh, with those lines, but in the overall uh, at, at, at 800 nodes, uh, it maintains an efficiency more than 80%. Uh, the IO is here, as you can see, do not scale well, but you can disregard IO because uh, it usually constitutes no more than 3% of the overall execution time. So it's, it's not really a bottleneck in our tool. Um, so what were the things uh, we did to, uh, we did uh, our code uh, or, you know, encountered while porting to parameters? Um, we did not face any major issues uh, while porting past this on parameter as our tool was already able to run on NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, 
But the thing is that um, uh, PASTIS needs both the CPU and GPU resources. So uh, the summit CPU nodes were, uh, CPUs were relatively slow compared to those GPUs, and the sparse computations uh, started to uh, started to dominate over the execution time. The alignments were really fast when we put them onto GPUs. So a faster G, uh, CPU uh, benefited past this on Perlmutter. And on the right here, uh, you see the Perlmutter comparison against uh, Summit and the Korea Haswell. Uh, that's a small scale uh, experiment on 64 nodes. And as you can see, uh, both the CPU and the GPU components uh, run faster than uh, the CPU and GPU components on Summit. Not even to mention the uh, Corey Haswell, uh, it's quite most in this figure. Uh, we also conducted uh, large scale experiments on Summit and Perimeter. Uh, the data sizes, uh, we tried a number of sequences. The highest on Summit were more than 400 million sequences. And on, on Perimeter, we tried uh, 200 million sequences. And the test scale, uh, on Summit, we tried largest uh, use around um, 3,300 nodes. And on Perlmutter, we tested on July on uh, around 1,000 nodes, 1K nodes. Um, on Summit, uh, our smaller scale run on 2K nodes with uh, 300 million sequences uh, took around uh, four, uh, uh, sorry, uh, roughly four, four hours. Uh, the larger uh, similar to search, bigger similar to search on 405 million sequences took around three and a half hours. Um, and the important metrics here uh, is the alignments per second and cell updates per second. Uh, those, were, those are quite good and we improve, improve those a lot in our bigger run. And this bigger run, uh, we submitted to the Gordon, for the Gordon Bell Prize and it was selected as a finalist. So it's going to appear at SC2 if you are you know, interested into, uh, interested or going to SC, uh, be welcome to uh, attend our talk. On Permadur, uh, we had a similar performance compared to Summit, uh, but the experiments were uh, on a smaller scale, uh, tested on 1K nodes and 200 million sequences. On the right here, uh, you see alignments per second per node. Uh, when we exclude IO, it's quite competitive, the summit and the parameter. And if, if parameter was bigger, was as big as uh, summit, uh, I think we, uh, we, would, uh, we would also submit those, uh, submit those uh, results to the, you know, uh, for the competition. Um, but I think the more important point is the uh, table at the below here. As you can see, uh, these are the times uh, spent in the sparse component and the alignment component of past this. Uh, the closer they are, uh, the better. Uh, it means that because the overall execution time uh, is going to be determined by the maximum of these two. So as you can see, at parameter these two and these uh, numbers in red is the uh, ratio of alignment to sparse the component and uh, on parameter uh, they are quite close. As for the state of the art, uh, the biggest run, uh, you know, uh, the biggest run reported to date uh, was reported uh, two years ago. Uh, a search uh, that uh, a search between uh, two datasets uh, containing 280 million sequences and uh, 40 million sequences. Uh, in this search, uh, the alignment rate uh, is computed to be. 1.2 million alignments per second. Uh, in our tool on Summit, uh, with our biggest run, uh, we achieved almost uh, 700 million alignments per second. Uh, this is an increase in, uh, in alignments per second in two orders of magnitude in, uh, in this metric. And as for the search space, the, the size of the search, the actual size of the search, we increased we increase that by uh, an order of magnitude, uh, 15x. Um, the biological workflows uh, is, uh, can be both uh, compute intensive and they usually have a huge 
memory footprints. I think that uh, that is what makes this uh, problem more challenging compared to physics simulations or you know chemistry simulations. Uh, in our approach, we use accelerators for the alignments, and we uh, relied on algorithmic techniques for staying in memory. And we use no intermediate I/O. We only utilize I/O at the beginning and at the end. So uh, this makes our approach faster. And then we also propose a lot of optimizations and a lot of optimizations to take advantage of the uh, heterogeneous node architecture to able to use all resources on the node. At the end of the day, uh, we cut time solution from days or weeks to hours. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, uh, I would be glad to answer them.